A painstaking task, that of sorting and preserving the fragments of Auschwitz's dark past. At the conservation department of the museum at the former Nazi camp, a team of 40 tried to save every last shred of evidence. As the documents are covered in writing which can dissolve in water, we need to protect them before we can clean them. This is the first stage of that process, using a sort of bath. The buildings too are crumbling. In all, there are 300 ruins at the Auschwitz-Birkenau site. The prisoner blocks are in a particularly bad way. Built on marshy ground, they were never meant to last. We're trying to preserve the original structures. That's our main aim, to keep the authenticity and not let any reconstruction get in the way of the feel of the place because everyone that comes here wants to be sure that they've seen material proof of this tragedy. But of course, restoring this number of buildings requires money, and government funds and visitor ticket sales just aren't enough. It's thought four to five million euros a year is needed to save them. Every time the decision to invest is set back, the harder and more expensive the conservation work becomes. At the moment, the brick-built blocks of Birkenau are the most at risk. We need to get all the conservation and foundation work done in the next 10 to 12 years. So we need to start within three years at the latest. The museum is now appealing to the European Union. It estimates 120 million euros is needed to retain Auschwitz as a permanent reminder of Hitler's final solution. We must also remember those who experienced the atrocities of the Nazi regime firsthand. I would like to pay tribute to Lily Ebert, the Holocaust survivor and educator who passed away aged 100 earlier this month. I am today committing a further £2 million to Holocaust education next year so that charities like the Holocaust Educational Trust can continue their work to ensure that these vital testimonies are not lost and are preserved for the future. Yeah.